No. No, I can't live this lie. Stop the music. Welcome to the adventures of Orange-Haired Anne. I have a terrible confession to make. Now, you might remember the episode before yesterday's episode where we were searching for the orb and I went settlement to settlement to settlement and didn't find anything. Not to mention none of the quests that we've seen have also offered the orb. Turns out, the orb can't actually spawn in. I know what you're thinking, but yesterday we raided somewhere and we got the orb. We did get the orb, but I had to do some behind the scenes tweaking, some illegal Rimworld to make it happen, okay? There is a good reason for it though. Before I did the behind the scenes tweaking, I spawned in a hundred quests just as a test, and not a single one of them had the orb. Now, that it, it could potentially spawn and it could just be the fact that we're using lots of different quest mods that add a bunch of whole new stuff. And by extent, the chance of getting an orb is exceptionally low. However, if we waited for the orb to naturally spawn, chances are the things that we can do with the orb would be kind of a waste of time. Because it might not be until late industrial era, maybe even spacer era. At that point, anything we make with the orb is just going to be completely outpaced. So I did replace one of the settlement rewards with an orb instead so that we can actually look at things. There, I admit it. I'm a fraud. I did what I thought would be best for the playthrough so that we can see this cool mod that we haven't been able to experience properly. And yes, the mod pack is horribly broken and no, nobody noticed, but that's not the point. We can't live a lie. We can't carry on like this. And if you can find it in your heart to forgive me, we're going to commit some real atrocities today. <laughs> I will also see if I can fix it as soon as possible for the main mod pack as well, for any of you playing along. So the million dollar question is, what can we actually make right now? We can make servant hounds, servant grunts, servant brutes, and servant goliaths, along with making a bunch of decoctions, some of which we looted from the settlement, actually. What is that other ingredient? We need one ingredient and five vitae for this one. This one requires one human-like corpse, five vitae, 25 leathers. Any leathers, though, I assume. Uh, manufactured textiles, leathers. Okay, we can make it out of anything we like. That's fantastic. Like, for example, the scales of our behemoth that was horribly murdered. I mean, this is fantastic because Anne so far, I'll be honest, as far as ancient vengeful vampires go, she's been pretty nice about things. She built all of her servants luxury houses. Even the slaves don't really live that badly. They, they get a, a, a modicum of freedom, I suppose, in a fairly safe area. We very rarely put them on the front lines unless it's super dangerous. But with this, we don't have to worry about it. The slaves do all the grunt work, the mining, the hauling, and giving birth, apparently. <laughs> the ghouls do all the skill work, like the crafting, the building, the researching. And in the combat, we throw to whatever the hell and can make in a mad science lab. Okay, let's have a look at the baby then. Is it any good? The baby is just out here in the snow. Uh, what are we looking at? Natural born colony child. Super immune and feeble. I mean, it's a baby. It's 13 hours old. I would argue 99% of babies are feeble. <laughs> that right there, that is absolutely how you store a baby. So I think given the amount of actual effort this took to set up in the end, why don't we just make one of each of them and see what they're like? I believe the grunts are for cleaning and hauling things like that the brutes are for combat and then the goliaths are certainly for even more than that but if you look that is two human like corpses and 75 vitae now vitae if i'm not mistaken we have to manually extract from colonists prisoners whatever using the operation command right extract vitae yeah there we are and it is only so often we can do that so really we should do the rounds of every single slave and take all of their vitae to my knowledge, I don't know much about Amnesia, which is what this mod is based on. Vitae is almost like despair. We're, we're, we're sucking up all their negative feelings. And we're going to turn that into Warriors for Anne. I mean, it sounds pretty perfect to me. You know what? Extract the Vitae from that baby. The freshest of all the Vitae. <laughs> oh, this is messed up. <laughs> Thank you, tiny child. I guess you could argue that a baby probably wouldn't have much Vitae to give because it's a baby. It hasn't had a chance to be ground down by the world yet. So we can't do that too frequently. See there, we get drained Vitae, minimal drain. Also, scratches and cuts, of course, from where you are. I don't know. Operating on it, I guess. Ah! Speaking of Vitae, hello. This 12-year-old is certainly a good choice. <laughs> this, is, this is messed up. I mean, I'm not going to stop, but I am going to make it known that this is messed up. Oh, wow, look at that. Is there any way to, to extract at a higher level? I guess you could do it over and over and over, and if you do it too much, they 
die. We might also need to get another doctor on board. It's, it's arrogant doing it for now. We could have Anne help out with doctoring too, though. And it was, what, 75 for the Goliath? I would love to be able to make that today, but 75 for that seems very, very ambitious. Not to mention we would need human corpses. I mean, we've got to humans they can be corpses whenever we need them to be i almost wish i'd have kept the bodies of the original four slaves and turned them into one giant goliath now i've got to make the really difficult choice of whether or not we crucify slaves and put them on display for everyone else to see or if we turn them into horrible mindless mutants ah <sighs> it's just too difficult being an <laughs> but we need an army to take out the empire and I'm not arming the slaves, because if we arm the slaves, then they might not be too pleased about the fact that they're still slaves at that point. Tiny child, give me your legs. It would be good if we could keep a whole room filled with people to just keep extracting Vitae from. All we have to do is feed them. And if I'm not mistaken, those decoctions that we looted allow us to make harvesters, right? Uh, I've no idea where exactly they've gone, but we've definitely looted them somewhere. A decoction made from Vitae. Gradually turns the consumer into a harvester, a servant capable of harvesting Vitae from its victims. Its victims' unharvested Vitae will be converted into an equal amount of stored Vitae upon transformation. What does that mean? The victims' unharvested Vitae will be converted into an equal amount of stored Vitae. Ah, I see. So maybe the way it works is this will go person to person, sucking up the Vitae and storing it inside them to be withdrawn from like some sort of creepy bank but they're also 10 vt each to make the potions so if i can find okay we got vt there i think we need to maybe just keep all of this stuff in Anne's lab separate from everything else remember viewers if you're gonna hack the legs off of a 12 year old make sure they're fully healed first otherwise the blood loss might finish them off you know what crucify that 12 year old <laughs> oh it's a pre-assembled crucifix. It already has someone on it ready to go. Not one of those cheap IKEA build-it-yourself crucifixes. No, no, no. It also has 150 beauty. Of course it does. Divinity. On this carving is an image of an owl suspended in the air, surrounded by farmers. The work reminds the viewer of bliss. Yes, it does. <laughs> on the plus side, what we lost in 12-year-old, we've gained in free person. Hello. I'm warning you right now. You are in for a horrible, horrible time, my friend. Can I set that one to just a medical bed for... If we set that, the other two people will lose their beds, though, won't they? Ah, but never mind. She's already bringing her over here. Perfect. Now, I have such massive plans for you. I've even gone as far to rename you immediately. She's not going on the front line. There's no worry about her immediately getting killed after giving her a name. Paralytic Abasia for 38 days means that... Or 36 days means that you are... An excellent Vitae farm. But we did also need a colonist of our own faction rather than a slave to feed the decoction to. Poor, sweet dandelion. <laughs> of all the places you could have landed, my friend, this was the worst one. Now, uh, forgive me a second. I may be misreading this. Does that say crossbows? <laughs> I think we've got three different mods that add three different varieties of their own crossbows. Before we get too carried away with the mad science, we do need to focus on what makes this colony tick. And that, in this case, is apparently ritual scarification. The mutilation of Anne Green and the target for this, I think, will be Anne Green. Because it's just very appropriate. Anne really doesn't seem into this. Uh, in fact, I'd argue that she's running away. <laughs> what have you done? She's like cowering in the corner. This is your fault. You made these people batshit crazy. Now you've got to embrace it. Wow, she's really not into this ritual, huh? I kind of feel a bit sorry for her. Spectacular. It was spectacular, though. Ah, there we go. I knew these shelves would be a good idea. What, was she already working on something? Oh, I interrupted her making a servant hound. Wait, out of a human body? Uh, definitely not. She must have been making a servant grunt then. Bear in mind, this is the most basic of the servants. So this is not only the first of many tiers of servants, but the other tiers are also upgradable as we've seen with armor, weapons. Not to mention some of the industrial era servants are... Oh, they're crazy. They're, they're insane. But you know what, Anne? I think that'll do. Let's put it right there. What do we do with you? Inactive grunt, not refrigerated, spoils in four days. Do we just... We just activate it. Do it. Bring him to life, Anne. Oh. Uh. Hello? Affected by animation sickness greater. Quality level good. Okay. She did she did a good job there. I say that, but it is just standing there. 
menacingly. <laughs> and I'm not just talking about the servant grunt. <laughs> <laughs> a servant created through the use of an orb, a twisted abomination, and a front to nature itself. Welcome to Brimworld. The Grunt was one of the first servants created using the orb, as such it is the most basic, both intelligent and strong enough to undertake menial tasks of lifting, moving, dragging bodies into the cellar in the middle of the night, and even mining. Luckily, it's not intelligent enough to question its own existence or remember its past life. I don't remember where I read it, but we did read somewhere that we had to train it before it would actually do anything. I was just sort of hoping it would do a little bit more than stand there. Uh, there's a Pegasus called Sorceress that's just landed in our magic garden. Holy crap, go and grab that. That is a hell of a pivot though for Anne. To go from riding on the back of a Hydra to a, to a Pegasus. Can we mutate the Pegasus? <laughs> Asking for a friend. Suit your mouth shut. No, see, that's not... Rip heart out. No, see, that's not... None of this is okay. I want to make the Pegasus stronger and more graceful. Bash spy. Oh, fuck hell. Look. <laughs> I can't read that. Get it away from me. What I was about to say is at least this has a reason, right? Where's it gone? Oh, it's disappeared. We need an army to fight the Empire. Turning dead bodies into soldiers is perfect because every raid the Empire send at us just bolsters our numbers. It's necromancy, but with a staggering amount of extra steps. That is a crime with a purpose. Bashing in a Pegasus's spine is not okay. <laughs> Where did it go? Servant Grunt 1. It's wandering around the mushroom fields. Well, that'll scare the life out of Buffy when she walks in. I guess we could name them. That would be good. Mindless, unthinking, unquestioning servants working towards the will of one person. I guess I'll name them after patrons then. Well, I can argue that that's been a fantastic start. We'll go for the servant brute next then. I'm fairly certain that's the one that allows you to upgrade it with weapons, armor, tools. And then while we're working on that in the background, let's get Anne to feed Dandelion a little bit of the harvester decoction. I hope we can just kind of... There you go. A minister servant harvester decoction. That's hard to say. And please put your clothes back on. That's fine. Don't worry about it. In your own time. Cheering up patient Dandelion. Oh, I mean, that's... Yeah, that's fair enough. We'll queue that up for afterwards then. Oh! A raid! Holy crap. Okay. Well, that is... That is that then. Gradually turns the consumer into a harvester, a servant capable of harvesting meat from its victims. So we have to... Uh, we have to keep feeding Dandelion the decoction. If Dandelion dies... I'll bring them right back. We have resurrected mech serums, and I did see the part where it says attempts at mimicking this are prone to failure. We have like three resurrect mech serums just sitting around down the line. You're in for a terrible time. Well, on the plus side, we do have our definitely not kill box. They sent a 10 year old after us. I've got to ask, what happened with the armor upgrades we were working on? Uh, 722 work remaining. We've made one of them. Okay, and where would that be? Turns out Opus had it equipped. Remind me to come and take your ear in a minute, Opus. And gets the first set of extremely heavy armor, mainly because she moves fast anyway, so the downsides are pretty much mitigated entirely with Anne. And if she wasn't unkillable before, she sure as hell is now. Now, a couple of people have pointed out the ghouls do have very, very good psychic powers, and, and, and I get it. They are incredible. Problem is, if we set the ghouls to sit down and meditate all day enough so they can actually be useful in combat... We're not going to get anything else done. Buffy is sowing the crops. Aragon is doing the research. Von Helsing is building the armor. Muffin Man is cooking, I would assume, with a name like that. I could test out a couple of hours of meditation rather than recreation. When we have the servants, it won't matter. Because then the servants can do all the really, really boring work. The ghouls can split their time between doing the really important stuff and meditating. But right now, they're kind of juggling both. And by both, I meant all three. <laughs> oh! They're trying to siege again, but they haven't invented drop pods yet. That is honestly maybe one of my favorite things I've ever seen in RimWorld. There we go, there we go. They're actually assaulting now. I want them to come closer to the base so that we can potentially take them alive, potentially take more Vitae, but in the worst case scenario that they do die, the bodies can still be useful to us now. But we have to somehow save up 75 Vitae over the course of today. I think that's, uh, that's a tall order. Oh, Lord. Try and actually take them alive, though. Now, Anne might be on cooldown, but Buffy the Ghoul is absolutely not. There we go. Thank you, Opus. It is much appreciated, my friend. Oh, and this is also great medical experience, too. Cut off? What do you mean, cut off? You cut off their hand to get the Vitae? Oh. 
Well, that is way more dangerous than I thought. But in good news, though, look, rescued animal joins. We've got ourselves a Pegasus now. Hello, Sorceress. Oh. Well, that's annoying. I queued up another leg to be hacked off of this child, and it just kills them immediately. Turns out eight-year-olds just aren't hardy enough to have their legs hacked off. Well, Anne didn't cut anything off then. What if Aragon's not as good as he thinks he is? Servant harvested a coction middling. Oh, we don't have to keep feeding her over and over and over. Of all the bodies she could have chosen to turn into a servant brute, she went with the child. Oh, God, another siege. They're interrupting my mad science. Maybe we shouldn't look at it like that. Maybe they're just volunteering. Oh, I want to try and take as many alive as possible. You'll soon notice how they're just not bothered by Anne being there. <laughs> Peace in our time. Wow, they really don't care? Well, now they care, but that's only because we're stood right next to them. <laughs> oh, God. I've got such a sore throat today, and every time I laugh, it's pain. But how can I not... <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll just carry them away one at a time. Sure, sure. I mean, it's free Vitae. How can I not? Meteorites. Oh! How dare you? Solid diamonds crushing my fucking cathedral. Maybe this is karma. My god, it did so much damage. Wow. I mean, it is also entirely gemstones, with the exception of this damn thing. Thanks for that. Yeah, I mean, we'll use it to make Anne something fancy, I'm sure, but I'm not best pleased. <laughs> Turns out two. Two is the limit on the amount that you're allowed to take for free. Brilliant. I mean, they didn't even try. It's just pathetic. This really is just terrible. Okay, let's get you to sleep as well, then. Perfect. Tenants of blood disrespected. It was a meteor. That's not my fault. I mean, I was joking when I said we've got some volunteers, but it turns out we very much do have volunteers. To the extent that now we've got to build an extension on the Vitae lab. Let's bypass the brute. We will build a brute eventually. We'll also build the hound eventually. But the Goliath for 75 Vitae. You know we've got to aim for that one. I want to see the look on the Stellark's face when we send in two people stitched together. <gasps> Dandelion died? What do you mean? Oh. Oh, Dandelion didn't die. Oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. I... I feel... I feel bad. I'm sorry, okay? Look at you. What do we do with you, then? How do we get the Vitae from you? Caution should be maintained when keeping harvesters, for they will turn on their creators if their internal store of Vitae remains empty for too long. Okay. And how do we... How do we extract the Vitae from that, though? Do, is it just the, the bill? Harvest Vitae. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay. Well, let's see what happens here, then. Operate on Dandelion. And we get... Was that 9 Vitae? So we've got 15 in total. Wow, that's very, very good. And I assume we can just unleash that on the slave quarters to fill up VT as it needs be. Vile. Unthinkable. I want to leave the slaves in as pristine condition as possible, given that they're going to be supplying, well, everything, our entire industry. So we're going to keep just a nice stock in here to extract VT from. Medical beds would be a bit more ideal because you do have to do a full-on surgery. As we've seen, limbs can fly off. They can take a lot of torso damage. But for the time being, stone slabs in a room filled with vomit and blood and Dr. Crow will have to do. I love you, Dr. Crow. Let's bring you closer to your patients. What happened to Anne? Anne? Anne has suffered a cave-in with this muffalo. <laughs> we can probably set aside the mad signs for a while then, given that we've only got 20 out of the 75 Vitae we need for the servant Goliath. I'm going to build another anvil because top priority is getting out just some armor. I don't care if it's the best quality, so we'll just get another person. Anne is okay at crafting. We'll just get her to help out and speed things up. Otherwise, we are going to be here forever waiting for it. <laughs> wow, that... Pegasus is actually really damn fast. Look at it go. Anne moves at 5.7 cells a second, which is absolutely obscene. To put it into perspective, a regular person moves at 4.6, which is pretty good. The Pegasus... What is your move speed? Where is it? Seven cells a second. Man, I'm sorry, Priscilla, but you are you are out of the picture, my friend. Anne dashing across the world on the back of a Pegasus to go and hunt monsters. 
I think that's incredible. Okay, so there is one out there in the world that we haven't defeated yet. We've got a basilisk there that we should take out. And I think on the way, we're going to have a look at the ancient vampire crypt. It's probably not worth it, but we'll go and take a look anyway. So if Anne rides Priscilla, it's 50 tiles a day. But if Anne were to ride the Pegasus, we go all the way up to 85.5. How ironic that it would be the basilisk turned to stone. Well... I mean, not really turns to stone. She just gave it a lethal heart attack. Otherwise, anything that kills you turns you to stone. So at that point, you have to put a copious amount of chicky nuggies in the same category as a basilisk, and I don't think that's right. So it turns out the harvester is better than I thought. It would just go out and hunt animals on the map. And then whenever it hunts, it will build up more and more vitae. So we can just extract this and then let it go back out there again and get more and more. Really, we should probably get a couple more of these guys next raid that turns up i want the ones in the prison because you know they're just useful to have around there you go okay so with the mine shafts we can get coal and iron yesterday i said we can't get steel or its components coal and iron and people thought i said we can't get components the problem is we can't get steel to make the armor right but with this that does solve the problem the downside is that we're gonna have to build a smeltery so that the slaves can process it down for us but that's fine because it saves our people another job then in this stockpile i've only allowed steel and smelted products so not gold ore but gold itself things that we can actually use after they've been smelted then we'll put the slaves in charge of smelting everything so i'm gonna go ahead and rename this area slave stockpile now, I want to make sure they've got coal to be able to smelt with and help build up Anne's little ghoul army here, but I don't want them to be checking everywhere on the map, right? So we're just going to swap that over to uh, Slave Stockpile. There we go. And then we'll do that until... I feel like that's a little bit over the top. Do that until they got 500. And then we'll do the same for every single ore as well. For the plasteel, though, we want to say look everywhere. Same with the uranium as well, because that doesn't need refining fat. Same with the jade. And as long as I've set that up right, we should be able to fuel whatever armor and weapons we want to make for Anne and the ghouls. Oh, no, that's gigantic. Oh. <laughs> yeah, all right. Maybe we won't worry about this one so much then, I guess. Oh, this is so sad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, it wasn't the raid I was expecting, but there we are. Wow. Okay, so that plate armor has made a pretty massive difference to the amount of raiders we get, huh? 13 versus 5. They are pretty damn well armed, too. I mean, not as well as armed as Anne, of course. Look at the detail on that crown. <laughs> <laughs> Still only 26 jars of Vita as well. We're only a third of the way there to being able to create our Goliath. We do still have two free hospital beds and plenty of room for other ones. Hang on a minute. Given that they don't get drop pod supplies, do you think they would just starve to death if we... If we just ignore them? Dandelion? Oh, God, it's going after Anne. Okay, uh, please don't kill it. Please don't kill it. What if we mesmerize? I wonder if that works on animals. Come on, come on. No, no, no. Get away from it, Anne. For God's sake. Okay. Okay, good as new. Maybe if Anne walks away when it goes Manhunter again in a second, it'll go after the slaves instead? Ah, well, I guess that solves that problem then, huh? <laughs> Hopefully the Muffalos will just knock a few of them over. You know what? Let's get our people back into position then. I'm going to bring down Anne and Buffy to sleep a couple of them too. What a close fight. Look at this. Or not. Turns out those Muffalos weren't nearly as good as I thought they would be. Nice. Okay, there's one down. And then you... Let's possess you. She has a blunt weapon, so... Okay. I was going to say, hopefully she'll be able to knock a couple of them over without killing them horribly. Now they're good at firing the ones I want to kill people alive. Only one more for the Vitae farm. And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for those damn meddling muffalo. <laughs> to help speed things up, I've also put Anne on highest priority operating. And that takes us just about halfway there. That is a power move if I've ever seen one. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly caravan turns up and you just get butt naked and lie down in a pool of blood. I can't fault them. Mm -mm. Delicious bottled sippies. It's certainly not the most horrific thing that we've done, but it's definitely up there in terms of the most evil and after draining dandelion dry we are up to 67 out of 75 and better yet we've only got two research projects done before we are done with medieval and it's almost perfect timing too seeing as we've made the best medieval armor we can possibly make so let's try doing this again okay so that's all of our research used up we have no points remaining oh oh how terrible <laughs> barnekin you shitbag! Oh! I needed him for my Vitae project. Well, I suppose we can capture another one. Oh, don't make it harder than it needs to be. 
<laughs> we only need eight more. So you know what, pal? You made this a lot harder on all of us. And by all of us, I mean you. I mean just you. Oh my god, it does work. You can just do it over and over and over. Oh, delicious. That also counts as having executed someone. Well, I suppose, yeah. Did she just immediately... Wow. I mean, that's just cold efficiency. The man wasn't even... Well, cold. But we have 76, though. That was legitimately enough. And hopefully he still counts as a corpse. Hmm. Oh, it's finally time. The monster of Castle Bran. And no, I'm not talking about the Goliath this time. Holy shit. It's that simple, huh? This thing better be worth it. If we can't defeat every Empire Raid with this, I'm not going to be impressed. We had to do some, some terrible stuff. Show me. Oh! Oh, he's so large. Quality good. Okay, that's nice. Vitae saturated. Wow. There's not really much point looking at the stats quite yet, given that it's still affected by the animation sickness. We don't have to worry about temperature with it. It eats raw meat and corpses. That might be a problem in a base that only grows mushrooms. 15% armor sharp and armor blunt. I wonder if we can do anything to it. Maybe if eventually we get some bionics, we could do something here. Or we could give it luciferium. <laughs> Another miner? Ah, oh, thank you, Raptor Jesus. And at long last, boom, the industrial age. Kind of would have liked a celebration, you know, some sort of message just to kind of let us know. Oh, or we'll fight the beastliest of beasts. What the hell does that mean? A rampaging insectoid hulk is nearby. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was me finally hoping to be able to celebrate the industrial era. We were a little bit behind the schedule that Oma set up for us. And instead, we got attacked by this thing. Oh, God. What the hell is this? Special mechanics? The Insectoid Hulk will enter a mindless rage after killing Prey, making it very dangerous. Its attacks stun its victims and has a nasty tendency to rip limbs out of their socket. So approaching one in close combat is akin to suicide. Oh, you fool. We have Anne. More to the point, do you think we could send our Goliath after it? We haven't even trained it yet, but I wonder if we could limit it to an area and make them fight. <laughs> well, team, no pressure. I mean, look, if the Goliath dies, we'll just send Anne and she'll, I'm sure, tidy up in no time whatsoever. I don't even know where the Goliath is. Uh, of course, it's in the cathedral. Okay, well, I'm going to take it too long to get down here then. Oh, but the insectoids are moving much faster than the Goliath is. Okay, fall back. Not you, Travis. Piss off. Let's see if we can bait it into fighting the Goliath. That would be so good. Oh, God, of course it would come through this side. Okay, open the door. Open the door. Maybe start moving. Muffin man's on the back of Sorceress. Oh, God. Buffy, 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 Buffy. Uh. They're going after Dandelion. Oh, but no, I, I want them to fight, damn it. Holy shit, it's ripping the walls to pieces. Holy crap. Oh, no, the slaves are going to die. It, it runs right through the walls. Oh shit. <laughs> um maybe we should maybe we should rush in. As fun as it would be to watch them fight, it isn't worth all of the slaves dying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. It's not a great idea, but it is an idea. There we go. There we go. Right, you guys come down here. Back the Goliath up. Maybe get its attention. Hey, pling at that. Hey, stupid, get over here. I think she genuinely just shot the slave. My god, it's actually happening. It's happening. No, it's running away again. I, I, I give up. I give up. Just kill the fucking thing. On the plus side, I think everybody's going to be okay for the time being. I've just sent it to sleep. <laughs> oh, the fucking thing. Just a bit walking around, it's breaking everything. Could we... Could we do anything with it? Making it go to sleep stop to being a manhunter. But now it's just going to break the base. I guess that scuppers my dreams of a giant horrible monster collection then, huh? Looks as if we can't tame it either. I think just for the sake of the base, I'm going to have to bring it down. I'm sorry. Oh, or I'll go Manhunter and try and fist fight Anne. Well, I suppose it's also a death sentence. No one died, but I'm so disappointed. Oh, fucking caravan animals. I'm so disappointed by this Goliath. It's so slow, it's almost unusable. I suppose it would make for a better guard for Castle Brand than anything else, because quite honestly, I don't think it can actually do much else. Well, there we go. Good work, Anne. And sure, the Goliath was disappointing now. You give it a good few hundred years of research. We'll put some big old barnet legs on that thing, and then it'll fly across the map. But I think this has been pretty peak evil vampire magic today. And we have 
barely scratched the surface with what we can do with this orb as well. These are all the basic medieval era servants. There are a few more in the industrial era that we'll have to start heading over towards. But I think that was a good amount of mad science for one day. But even if the Goliath was completely and utterly shit, we've got potential for it to be great in the future and a whole new friend anyway here in the industrial age. Now I'm excited to see what we can do with the rest of the mod pack because the most of the mods this time around were industrial based. Whereas with the Ohm series, I tried to keep everything balanced. This was all about the fight against the Empire. So they are going to get a, a definite advantage over us now. They're, they're going to get access to a lot of quite powerful stuff that's going to put us on the back foot. But you know what they don't have? It's fucking Anne on a Pegasus. I don't stand a goddamn chance. Thank you all for watching. I'm excited to finally be in the industrial world because, like I said, that's where the, the, the bulk of the gameplay is. So we've got ourselves a nice castle. Let's start doing some good stuff with this base and with our, with our volunteer economy we've got going on here. Thank you, of course, as always, to the patrons for making the channel possible in the first place. A big thank you to Mathanius, That Gay Commie, Psycho Fire, Krusty Rhino, Jexel, Lapis Golem, Neo Zela, Squires, Zaka, Cat, Helviticus, Night Rouge, Sabat, Fairy Wiz, and Accidental King for their support. The executive producer tiers over on Patreon. Thank you all for your support over there. And a thank you as well to Sendy, Magister Militum, Nira Gupin, Bilbo Fraggins, Hjorta123, Natna, Brennick, Blaticus, Typhon198, Railingar, Elite IMP, Fred, Dan does a thing, I see the great, and Larry the Emu as well. See you all tomorrow for more Anne. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything else, am I? <laughs>